Hi everyone, a very, very warm welcome back to the Mectech Garage as it's been mega, mega hot this week. I hope you've all been surviving it in the 40 plus degrees that we've been having. We are sitting in the super van as you can see and this is going to be obviously today's video we are carrying on with the engine. Now in the last episode, which was quite some time ago, we did the cylinder head, redone all that, had it all skimmed, and relapped all the valves in, all that sort of thing and we started to hone the bores on the cylinder liners. Now, you would have seen if you watched the last video that the cylinder honing tool that I had was wearing out and I had to order a new one. That came in a couple of days later and obviously I carried on with the job. There has been a fair gap in between doing all the other projects and whatever else, sort of jumping on and off the engine and what have you. So we're gonna go back in time to past me, carry on from where we left off in the last video and then you'll see it progress obviously as we go along and about halfway through the video we'll come back to present day and obviously uh, the progress that's been made or not been made as the case may be you'll see what I mean <laughs> um, as we go along so without further ado I'll pass you to pass me and I'll see you in a bit right well they say size isn't everything but <laughs> there's a bit of a difference in size to new to old um, I'm hoping it's still going to do the job alright because obviously the bores in this cylinder block um, aren't that big so we should be alright with that look as, it's, as you can see there it does fit inside um, I think this cylinder honing tool is more probably for brake cylinders and things like that but there we go we'll give it a go and see what it comes out like it should do the job this might take a little bit longer let's carry on I think I got a bit carried away with the old stripping down of the engine. <laughs> Literally, I've got the whole thing apart. The only thing I haven't got out is the camshaft, which is sitting in there, is loose. And I have pulled it sideways to have a look at the bearings for the camshaft, and they actually look just fine. I'll show you in there. Can't really see all that well, but with the light in there, you can see that they're okay. So I'm happy to leave them as they are. That's good. Um, you can see I've obviously got the uh, all the pistons and everything out and you can see the witness marks in them cylinders which is what I'm going to try and hone out um, where it's been sitting this is the worst one number one you can feel that one a little bit um, so yeah that's where we're at the moment so basically I've got everything in bits I'm going to start cleaning it all up so it can be going back together once the uh, cylinders are all honed out and I'll clean the block out and everything else so we clean everything out make sure it's as mint as it can be and uh, go from there as you can see the main bearings, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm in an iron about at the moment because they've still got the white metal on them, um, so they've not worn down much, but they've got a lot of marks in them. Um, and I'm not massively happy about the way they look, but I don't know, maybe maybe they'll just be fine. But again, with the other sides, the same. They're not worn down to nothing. They're just sort of a bit pitted and few marks in them but nothing horrendous so I don't know do I leave well alone or do I put new ones in we shall see that looks a bit better doesn't it nice and cleaned all oh, everything's being cleaned ready to go back together bar in the block because obviously I'm waiting to do the honing on that so I don't want to clean that yet until uh, obviously do that and then I'll give it a good clean after so everything's ready pistons are there all good to go front crank casing or the timing casing all the timing gear I've got a new chain and a new guide to go in here because the guide's actually missing the little plastic runner off of there um, cleaned up those main bearings have actually come up pretty well so I'm probably going to run with them I think um, obviously all the nuts and bolts I've cleaned up crankshaft I've cleaned up backing plate I've cleaned up now one thing I have got to change is this plate here which is on the front side of the engine as you can see on this one, it should have the two engine mount um, bolts, uh, uh, sorry, nuts in it to bolt through to, but these ones have been snapped off and then they've been welded and then they've snapped off again. So I'm going to get another one of these plates off one of the other engines and that will obviously sort that problem out then. So 
I'm going to go and uh, swap that over so at least I've got all the bits ready for when the block's ready to go back together and then we can start bolting it all back. Lovely jubbly! Right, yeah, as you would have seen from that previous bit of time lapse there, I've run that new flex hone through all four of the bores, but I'm not happy with those marks in there. You can feel them and they're quite severe. I'm trying to get you to focus on them. There you go. Um, you can see where the piston rings have been stuck at some point in time, which is probably why it's got new piston rings in it, or what I believe to be new piston rings in it, um, because that cylinder has got quite a deep score way around it where it's been rusted to the sidewall. So, there are two um, options I've got. One is to buy a new set of liners, which is about 200 quid, which I haven't really got the budget for at the moment, I'm gonna be honest. Um, the other option is, which I'm gonna tr hopefully try and do, is I'm gonna get the other engine, the other block, the old block, older block I should say, um, and I'm gonna use the flex hone in that and see what they can't block. I know one of them, one of the engines I've got is worse than this one so I'm not going to use that one but the other one when you run your hand down the side of the bore it feels smooth right the way down so I'm hoping that that one's never been stuck and it won't have the same problem as this one um, the only downside to that is on the other engine one of these liners has popped up slightly which means I'm going to have to reseal them whether I take them out of that engine and put them back in that sorry take them out of that block and put them back in that block or whether I take them out of that block and put them in this block um, makes no odds really obviously it's just a different engine number on the side at the end of the day um, I would like to really use this block I know it sounds a bit sad but this one matches the head as far as the age um, so I may take the liners out of the old one and put them into this one um, but obviously before I do that I want to get the other engine on the bench and hone those cylinders out and see what they come out like because obviously there's no point in me knocking them all taking them all out um, if they're no good either so we're going to get that one on the bench and we'll get rid of this block for a minute get the other block on the bench get it stripped down same as this one and go from there and see what sort of condition the line uh, the, the liners come up in when i've honed them out with the flex hone let's carry on radio this is the second engine that i was telling you about that i want to try and hone the bores on and as you can see sort of in there they do look in a lot better condition and no deep pitting or score marks or anything like that which is great however the engine itself looks to be full of plant life <laughs> as all I can describe it as bits of tree and all sorts and you can see in the middle of the crank there it's got all sorts of gunk behind it so I'm sort of edging at the moment towards honing these liners and if they come up nice then you can see this one's slightly raised so I'd have to take them out anyway to reseat them all so I may end up putting these liners in the other block because the other block is a lot cleaner, the one down there on the floor. Um, so I feel a bit happier using that one, I think. But um, I'm going to get the sump off, get the pistons out, and then we can hone these bores and see what they come out like. Let's carry on. Radio with the pistons out you can see what bad condition these ones are in compared to the others they're all bronze there's no white metal left on the shells and they are really got some deep scores in them you can see that one there in particular um, and that one there as well both sides and the, unfortunately the crank matches it <laughs> so the crank's got some pretty deep scores in it which is not good my other crank um, which is the one over there has not got any scores in it at all which is why I chose the other engine originally but obviously if the bores in this one are okay then uh, we'll make one out of two so I'm going to get the uh, hone set up in the drill the flexi hone and we'll give these a go through with, with that and see uh, see where we get on let's carry on right since the last bit of that video 
quite some time has passed and not a lot has happened apart from my workbench has got a lot more messy. <laughs> but actually no, that's not true. Things have happened. Right, we've got the engine blocker back on here as you can see. But I'm not messing about anymore. I've got four brand new cylinder liners to go in there. So rather than messing around with the old ones out the other engine, we are going to put these nice new ones in, all four. And I've also got brand new uh, shells, main bearing shells, and also brand new, sorry, I shouldn't, that's not right. Uh, brand new main bearings and brand new shells for the big ends on the pistons. Um, I'm not 100% sure where they are at the moment, but I have got them. So that is the plan now. We're the next thing, I'm not going to mess around with this anymore as far as flopping bits about. I'm just going to get it built hopefully so we're going to get these liners knocked out see what sort of state the blocks in inside give it a proper good old clean up degrease all the rest of it and then we can start putting the new liners in get the pistons put back in with the and i'm going to measure those rings and that will determine whether they are new or not or whether they're worn or not i should say um going obviously on the specs from the haynes manual we can measure those with a feeler gauge in the nice new liners so we know where we are with those whether i need to get new rings or not i know ideally get new rings would be the, the ideal scenario but they are a little bit hard to come by and they're not exactly cheap either so and I'm already about another 300 quid into this engine so far so let's get these liners out I've got a it's actually a bearing uh, tool here which I've selected the right size which fits inside those uh, cylinders lines I should say fine so hopefully they will knock out fairly easily we'll get obviously a hammer on there give them a little tap see what happens let's crack on and get these out right as you can see that is the first one out it didn't take a lot to knock that out actually I was quite pleased but look at the gunk that's come out of it with it that was all inside the engine block and there's a lot more in there as well so this engine may I say may have had some overheating issues in the past due to all that gunk and whatever inside there so I'm basically going to get the other three of these liners knocked out as you can see they've got um, a seal around them which goes around this little waistline here it's a stuff called silco set and i've got some more of that to obviously seal the new ones in with so we can get those sealed in but obviously the next job now is to get the rest of these out and then it looks like we're going to be on a mega cleanup operation on the inside of this block to make sure that it's nice and clean and all the water can obviously flow through it nicely um, without having any sort of uh, blockages or anything like that so i'm gonna get these other ones knocked through and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, there we go those are the four liners out and as you can see one of them did break doesn't matter because obviously I've got new ones anyway um, but I just wanted to show you inside this block here now the first one I took out was actually the worst as far as around it all the gunk that was around it because obviously this is the end that's got the least flow effectively it's got some pretty pretty murky stuff in there but the rest of it although it's got some gunk in there yeah it's not great it's not horrendous either so I'm going to get all that scraped out of there and then we can start washing this block down and getting it as clean as it possibly can be. Let's carry on. Well, as you can see there, that definitely wanted cleaning out. So uh, I'm going to now get the workbench cleaned up and then we'll carry on cleaning the block. Come back to you in a bit. So, I know what you're thinking, that engine block looks absolutely lovely and clean. Well, I was thinking exactly the same thing until I started looking inside, now it's all clean. And if you can see down inside there, 
the side wall is paper thin and I noticed it from the outside first and you can see obviously there's a hole there now which means that this block is toast you can see there was some corrosion on the outside and I literally just tapped it with a screwdriver and it's gone straight through the side of the block so that is game over for this block so it looks like we're going to be taking the other block apart and cleaning that one up as well <laughs> and hopefully we might have a bit better luck with that one um, yeah I've got two more shots at this because I've only got two more engine blocks and if they're no good then I'm going to have to be shopping for another engine which is uh, unfortunate because I had about eight of them at one point and I gradually sold them off because I thought these were the best ones and quite clearly they're not so uh, yeah not ideal right <laughs> here we are again as you can see this is one of the other engines I've got now I've got obviously got a choice of two other ones I've got two other spares now Dan told me my mate Dan told me that the earlier castings are better but this engine which is a later casting the same as the one that I've just found the hole in is actually the matching one for the head that I've had skimmed so I'm thinking if this one's going to be any good inside I'd quite like to use this one because I well, know it doesn't make a blind bit of difference but I'd quite like to have them so that they're matching so I've got the matching head and the matching block together so that'd be quite good so obviously I need to get all this stripped down to the same state as the other one get the liners knocked out of it they aren't horrendous on this one but they have got some pretty rough areas in them where they're corroded um, where they've been sitting and they're quite rough and it wouldn't take long for it to start smoking so it still needs new liners I was going to do that no matter what obviously we've got new ones so I'm going to get all this stripped down to its bare bones we'll have a good look inside it once we've got the liners out and make sure this one's not corroded badly like the other one was before we start cleaning it all up because otherwise I'm going to spend ages cleaning it all again and then we're not going to be able to use it so that's the plan so I'm going to get all this stripped down and I'll come back to you in a minute right after five minutes of taking the rear face plate and clutch and flywheel off I think we may have hit a brick wall with this one as well this is exactly the same area look at that there's a crack in it so obviously I don't know if that goes all the way through or not but I'm not sure I really want to risk that to be honest with you and I think uh, Dan's information about earlier or later blocks being not very good is seems to be true because that's terrible I literally I've taken off as I say look you can see the back of the engine there first you've taken off anything and um, give it a bit of a clean up in the same area because it's exactly the same area as the other one at the hole in I thought great no corrosion then I started looking closely and I saw that crack and I was like oh no so it looks like we hit a bit of a brick wall with this one as well because I'm not very confident about using that with a cracking like that so I'm going to I'm going to take this engine off the bench and go and get the third engine which is the older one and we'll have a look at that and do that because the same we'll take the flywheel and the um, rear face plate off and have a look and see what condition that one's in hopefully it'll be third time lucky I'll come back to you in a minute rightio it looks like we might, might be third time lucky I'm hoping I've just done exactly the same as you can see got the flywheel and end plate off and this one looks to be okay and I've actually cleaned that with WD and wire wall just to make sure there's no cracks or anything like that in it so hopefully the oldest engine that I've got is actually the best one now obviously I'm not I'm gonna give it more of a thorough inspection once it's all apart and obviously we've got all the insides out and we'll have a look down inside where the liners go same as you do on the other one make sure the inside of this surface and all the other surfaces inside the water jacket are okay uh, only time will tell on that sort of thing so I want to carry on get this one stripped down and fingers crossed we've got an engine block we can use I'll come back to you in a bit
Right, as you would have seen, me smacking 10 bells out of that water pump to get it off, finally got it off, and it's actually looking quite promising inside there. Virtually no corrosion, well no, there isn't any corrosion. That is just brown from the where the antifreeze has been. It looks in really good condition in there, so I am quite chuffed so far. It looks like the worst condition engine externally could be the best condition engine internally, so let's hope so. Let's carry on getting this thing stripped down and uh, see what it's really like when we get the liners out. All I'm going to say is, top banana. <laughs> Look at the inside of this, compared to the other one. And bear in mind, I haven't cleaned this yet. This is as it was. Hang on, my wires caught, man. This is as it was. I've just hoovered it, as you saw in the time lapse. That casting in there is absolutely perfect. You can even see down in that corner there, there's a shiny bit. So this has obviously been run with decent antifreeze all its life. Now this engine is a lot more worn than the other one was but obviously in turn because it's a lot more worn it's had a lot more use and probably been serviced more so it actually has as has actually can't talk done it some good in an odd kind of way so a lot of the other parts are worn which we're going to replace anyway the block itself looks in mega condition so i'm hoping once i've got it all cleaned up that it's going to be absolutely fine i'm really really chuffed so it just goes to show it looks like what Dan told me was right, earlier castings of these blocks is a lot better quality than the late ones, so I am well chuffed. So I'm basically going to go through the same um, process again as I did with the other one as far as cleaning is concerned. And then obviously we can look at starting to get these new liners put in and get some uh, Silco set around the bottom and get them in there and obviously uh, hopefully they'll be all good to go then. Lovely jubbly. Rightio, as you can see there now, I've got the block completely stripped out down to nothing. I've even got all the little lifter cup things out as well there. Now, a few, all of those are actually stuck, which is why the camshaft was such a pain to get out. But they're out, along with the oil pump shaft and the camshaft as well on this one. I'm not taking any chances because this block is pretty manky as far as sort of wood, woodland, woodland um, foliage and things inside it. So, not ideal. But, um, other than that it's looking really good the only problem I can see that may be an issue is the head studs are quite corroded the threads on them and some of them are non-existent in fact that one's a little bit loose so we are going to have to take those out and put some new head studs in now knowing what these aluminium blocks are like that could be an issue because <laughs> obviously I think these are steel so that is going to be the, uh, the next uh, issue before I go any further with cleaning and everything else, I'm going to see if I can get those head studs out. Um, so obviously we can replace them with new ones and then we can get this face nice and clean for the head gasket to meet onto. Because obviously with all these in the way, um, it does make it a bit difficult to get it nice and clean and flat. So yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. So I'm going to carry on, try and get those head studs out 
and then if they all come out okay then we can get to cleaning it let's carry on right as you can see I'm now on the floor with my dear old granddad's monkey wrench and I've managed to get out eight studs so far I've just got out one more I only had seven at one point now I've got eight they are proving very stuck well I say that the seven came out fairly easily the one I've just got out today was really stuck these four are the last four obviously and they are proper in there now over on the other block over there excuse the mess you can see I got all the studs out of that within a minute and they come out really easy no problem at all obviously that's the block with the hole in it so although this block is in mint condition compared to that one because it's obviously older the studs are proper rotted in there so I'm having a right pick of a job to get these out I'm using heat WD-40 in it with an hammer <laughs> everything so I'm gonna carry on I'm not gonna bore you with the process of me trying to get these studs out because it is taking a long long time and I'll come back to you when I've had a bit more progress right I almost had a hundred percent success until the very last one and as you can see it snapped off so that was the one I actually tried initially at the start and it was really really difficult so I went on to all the others and I've obviously ended up with that one left and it couldn't hack it that's what was left of it look it just absolutely annihilated it it just snapped so I've just filed that flat I've now got a little bolt which I've ground the end a chamfer on the end on my bench grinder and I'm going to weld that on the end of the stud and I'm hoping that the heat from welding that on will not only free it up but because it will have a bolted on the end of it I'll have something to put a decent ratchet and bar on so we're going to try that see what happens um, and go from there I guess I don't really know what else to suggest at the moment so this is going to be the next option I'll get this welded on and I'll come back to you right unfortunately I've had a zero success rate I've welded a nut onto it I've welded a bolt onto it both of them literally just snap off straight away so I don't want to obviously ruin this block because it is my final block I haven't got any more and this is the best one by far as far as the inter internal condition is concerned so I'm going to bite the bullet and take it to the machine shop that did the cylinder head and hopefully they'll be able to get that rest of that stud out for me and if they can't then they'll have to drill it out and re-tap it I guess so that is going to be the plan of attack for this one I don't want to obviously hack it up anymore um, or sort of risk drilling a hole in the side of it obviously they'll have all the specialist tools that will guarantee that it will go straight and all the rest of it so yeah that is the plan for that so hopefully when we start the next episode on the super van if we're back on the engine again then we will have a um, freshly cleaned and stud free block to get the new liners into that is the plan so there we go that is unfortunately how we're going to have to leave it at the minute because as I say I don't want to ruin it anymore um, and I'd rather pay someone who's got the specialist tools to get it sorted hey ho let's carry on right then that is going to be it for this episode on mech tech as you would have seen in the previous clip unfortunately we have fallen at the last hurdle with that final head stud that snapped so hopefully fingers crossed the machine shop that I, that I took the cylinder head to can sort that out and get that stud out obviously I don't want to put any new parts into that block until I know that that stud is either out and, re and sorted or retapped or whatever because if it can't be sorted out then obviously I'll have to get myself another block so we are at a, a stopping point unfortunately on the engine at the moment yet again um, this engine seems to not want to be built for some reason every time I sort of make a bit of progress on it it goes backwards again at least one step you know so it's one of those things you can't um, sort of see into the future and see what's going to happen with things like that it's just one of those things with old cars just have to take it as it comes <laughs> so yeah if you did like what you see make sure you hit that subscribe button and obviously ring the little notification bell it will tell you every time I upload a video I have got Instagram mech underscore tech 1985 and I have got Facebook mech dash tech for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to and all that is left for me to say is if you want to join me soon for more automotive ventures projects mechanical mayhem all that sort of thing and I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.